Good afternoon, you absolutely cracking humans. It is a beautiful, beautiful afternoon here in Melbourne. It's Thursday afternoon. I'm just heading out to the bike race. Literally haven't picked the camera up all day, but I'm um, just heading out to the Carnegie Caulfield race and uh, just waiting for Jared. I told you guys last week but Jared uh, rode away from the bunch from B grade in the really windy conditions and stayed away on his own so that's the sort of rider he is he can do that I can't do that I've never been able to do that the plan is to stick on your stick wheel on my wheel okay All right. your lead out train today now, it's a nice day there's not much wind so it should be a bunch finish I might have a chance This is the Carnegie Caulfield Cycling Club's uh, Criterium out at Sandown Racetrack. This is the B-grade race. You can see we've got a few humans here. There's got to be, uh, what, 40, 40, 50 riders here, maybe more. Quite a few uh, quite a few guys out having a crack. It's a beautiful evening. I can tell you there wasn't a breath of air. And uh, it was the perfect sprinters race, this one, because it wasn't a hard race, if, you know, in contrast to last week um, there was a lot of wind in the bike race and uh, you know it made for a hard race when you got a lot of wind I mean it was so windy that as we were riding out to the race we were laughing because we, we just couldn't believe how windy it was so as we were going around the racetrack we were just like oh my god this is so hard and we started with 40 riders and I think we finished the race with 15 people so you know probably 20 people so a lot of people got spat out the back it was a very difficult race so this week was uh, a lot easier and it was easy to sit in and people were attacking but the bunch was just bringing them back constantly so so yeah uh, we're coming up to the second last lap here if you look on the there's the, uh, the start finish line but that's the start finish line for the car races the actual bike race finish line is right here and you can see on the right hand side there they're holding up the two laps to go sign so that's for B grade and uh, so that was so that little setup there with the start finish line can be confusing a lot of people sprint to the wrong line but um, that's okay uh, you soon learn which is which. The funny thing is the race on Thursday nights, so this is the Tuesday night race, the race on Thursday nights, they sprint to that car racing line. So that's probably why it gets a bit confusing for people. Anyway, semantics, two laps to go. We are, I've been pretty much doing this. So this is me with the GoPros. I've got a GoPro on the back of the bike and a GoPro on the front. A lot of people ask me about my settings on the GoPros and how I film. So I usually uh, have those settings in previous videos, but on this occasion, I'll put the settings in the description in the link below. And you guys can, uh, if you're using GoPros, you can set your GoPros up just like that. I'm using the Hero Session 4, so the little black GoPros. I don't like the video output. I'm not a big fan of it. I think the, uh, the GoPro Hero 4 Blacks do a better job of video. But anyway, so here we are. We're coming in the second lap. We're just uh, down the bottom of the course now. And the main thing here in terms of cycling tips, I'm really just trying to look after myself. Um, you know, it's a real, as I said to you earlier, it's a beautiful evening and uh, very little wind. So I pretty much knew it was going to be a sprint finish. And as a lot of you know, probably the new subscribers don't know that I'm a you know, if there's anything I'm good at in cycling, it's probably sprinting. I'm certainly not a good hill climber. So you can see the bunch is fattening up here. We're sort of, everyone slows down. And when the whole bunch slows down, everyone sort of spans out across the width of the road. And we've had a rider attack down the right-hand side there. But you'll soon see that people start responding. And then once one rider responds and another rider responds, then everyone sort of jumps on their wheels. And uh, the group comes back together. 
And if it was like last week, there was people attacking constantly. And because it was so windy, it was really hard even in the bunch to follow. So that's why non-windy nights like this are good for sprinters. So you can see we've responded here. We're uh, doing 45 kilometers. This is a slight uphill now, so 45 k's an hour. My heart rate's somewhere in the mid 180s. Um, and I'm keeping the cadence fairly high, you know, 97 RPM. The thing is, I'm con like in the bunch here, right? I'm consciously thinking, look after yourself. Don't do any turns on the front, okay? You want to save yourself for the sprint. And I'm consciously thinking about keeping my cadence. So my ca your cadence, uh, for those that don't know, is how fast your feet are spinning around. So if you push a big gear, you're spinning a, a lower cadence. And if you're pushing a, a high, one of the higher gears, then obviously you're going to be spinning a lot faster. So I'm concentrating on spinning, 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 because once you start pushing a big gear and you start grinding away, uh, you start to get lactic buildup in the legs and you just cook yourself. You just don't feel amazing for the finish. So so this is the bottom corner. This is a bit of a, a hairy old corner, this one, because you're sort of coming into it with speed. But um, usually everyone's pretty good. And then we come along through here. And this is where it's really key to have position. You can see people, I'm sort of thinking about moving forward. I'm sort of mid-bunch now. But it's, as I've said to you guys in the past, it is very important in the last two laps or in the last, you know, couple of kilometers of a bike race to move forward. And you can see I'm slowly doing that. I'm trying not to do it rapidly and while the bunch is at speed, but I just made up a couple of places there. And you'll see later on, I, I just, I keep making up places. And I said to someone the other night, it's a bit like Tetris, like that game that you get on your phone or on your computer. In the last couple of laps of bike race, you've just got to fill every gap. So when there's a gap open up, you've just got to keep moving forward. You can't let people come around you because then you'll find yourself at the back of the bike race. And anyone who finishes, bike, we get the bell now, so you can hear the bell dinging. And uh, so anyone finishes the bike race halfway or further back down the back of the bunch, you know, you're just filling numbers. Like you just, it, it's at this point right now, you should be thinking about how can I move forward? Now, I'll tell you how to not move forward, all right? When the bunch is doing 45 Ks an hour or 50 Ks an hour, you don't want to be making up places because that's when you're exerting, you've got to exert a lot of power to push forward. So you've got to find times when the bunch sort of sits up a bit, when they start to slow down. We're down to 38 k's an hour, so we've slowed down a bit now. And I'm thinking about moving forward, but obviously there's a lot of people around me, so I can't. But it's on occasions like this when the bunch slows down, think about just pushing forward a little bit. But again, it's a balancing act. You don't want to get, you don't want to end up on the front. So you've got to be smart. I'm probably 10 back here. And I know that, uh, well, I'm pretty confident that I'm in a pretty good position. And then a little bit later down the back of the course, I could probably make up a, a couple of places. So this is the last lap. We, uh, we come through the bottom of the course here, then head out up the straight and uh, slightly up the hill. And that's where a few attacks will generally happen, going up over the, uh, the top of the course there. You see, it's. And I can tell you one thing about this right now is it, this video does not convey how twitchy and edgy and anxious the bunch are. Like people are, you know, they want to be up the front. So you can see we're not going that fast. We're doing 44 kilometers an hour. That's not really that fast. Uh, not in a bunch like this anyway on a night when there's very little wind. And so what happens is you get riders moving forward on the left and the right. And a key thing, you'll see what I do up here, is I move out of this middle bit because where I am right now in the middle of the bunch like this is a very dangerous place to be because you can find yourself at the back of the bunch very quickly, all right? People just come around down the outside and uh, before you know it, you're at the back of the bunch. So you've got to keep moving forward here. So you see a whole bunch of riders have moved forward on the left-hand side and all of a sudden I'm 20 riders back. So I'm saying to this young kid, come on, move forward, push up. And I yell out to this Hawthorne guy in front of me, come on. And I'm just saying, guys, keep moving forward. So, and you can see I've moved out to the right of the bunch and that's exactly where I want to stay now. I don't want to be in the middle of the bunch at all. If I find myself in the middle of that bunch, I'm going to be looking for places, ways to get out, okay? So you can see I've moved forward 
I'm down the right hand side here it doesn't matter right or left as long as you're not in the middle and you see a couple of guys are coming my right now that's sort of making me edgy because I'm thinking oh my god if, if I get stuck now in the middle this is not good so you can see we're not going that fast we're doing 43 kilometers an hour we're sort of coming down a bit of a hill here so I'm constantly thinking to myself right you make sure you keep moving forward at all costs okay and you can see here now watch this bit here there's 10 riders I, I stay on number 62's wheel and you can see I just pass about four riders and all of a sudden I'm fifth wheel okay now that was a critical critical moment all right because I went from being 10 12 15 wheels back to all of a sudden I'm fifth wheel and I'm in fantastic position the key to this bit now is I'm looking to the right making sure no one comes over and sort of blocks me in you'll see a couple of guys attack here they just get a bit edgy let them through that's fine okay because they're going a bit early but don't let too many people through so now I've got maybe seven riders in front of me five riders something like that coming through the final turn here up to a thousand watts I'm at 181 beats a minute we're doing 55 k's an hour and all I'm thinking is keep shelter keep shelter I'm thinking of this guy stay on his wheel now I'm going full tilt now I'm committed to the sprint and going as hard as I can but you can see I use the draft of all those other riders to slingshot myself past them and I ended up having a win so uh, this was a really good example of positioning and uh, it was a good win now there's a bit of a story to this finish it's not often I get to win bike races so I threw my hands in the air uh, throwing your hands in the air at Carnegie Caulfield races especially at Sandown where it's a windy track uh, is not allowed so I was expecting a fine but um, we'll soon see what happens so let's recap this sprint. I want to tell you everything that I'm thinking here. There's a couple of riders that have come through. As I'm coming through this bend, I don't want to sit on anyone's wheel. I want to keep an eye on those front two riders to know exactly when I need to put it in the 11. Uh, that's my gear and go as hard as I can. You can see here I'm comfortable with this. We kick out of this final corner and I am thinking long and hard right now about the fact that we are pushing pretty high wattage so we're doing 1035 watts we're going pretty fast 53 k's an hour and i know that people aren't going to come up my left and right at that speed and at that power so i'm pretty happy with the fact that everyone has gone early you can see this rider jumps out way too early he so he kicks to go around everyone he jumps out to the right and it's way too early it's a long way to go to the finish whereas I'm drafting the guy here in front of me and then I go up the inside here and I keep drafting the whole time I'm drafting drafting looking after myself and it's not until this point that I've fully committed now and that's when I've stepped out so you, you can see I've used the other riders the whole time I didn't actually step out real hard to the left or step out real hard to the right so that's a key thing to remember in sprinting is use the other uh, riders for drafting yeah. how'd you go I was, I was trying to follow your wheel on that last corner but uh, did you just see me yeah so I won the B grade race but I got DQ'd for throwing my hands in the air which is fair enough how'd you go bro no good mate no good you let it out didn't you yeah first through the S bend and then okay. Had a go for a long straight and no good. Alright, how long have you been racing? Uh, about 65 years. Yeah? <laughs> you're that old? <laughs> I'm 73. Mate, you look you're doing well. You're looking fit as a fiddle. It's a good sport, mate. All right, good humans, that is the end of the vlog for today. Honey has just made me an amazing... It's, an, mo it's mole. It's mole or something. Mole. 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 Yeah, mole. Anyway, it's some vegan meal, but she's such a keeper, this girl. She's amazing. Um, so I just want to talk about the race. I won the race tonight, but I got disqualified. Uh, threw my hands in the air. Look, to be honest with you, I thought I was going to get fined. Uh, I should know better. The rules are that you don't throw your hands and do a victory salute. And the reason for that is they don't want people throwing their hands in there because sand down gets very windy. And they don't want young people, young riders, inexperienced riders, throwing their hands in a victory salute and the wind catching their wheel and then bringing down the whole bunch. It's just, it's just not worth the drama. And especially with... 
all of the legal stuff that goes on. They just don't need that crap. So I should have known better. But in the when you when your heart rate's at 190, 183 beats a minute, um, you don't make great decisions. And at the time, I just thought, you know what? I've won the race. I'm 42 years old. It's not often I'm going to get to meet, beat all these young fellas. I made a very split decision to just throw the hands in the air in a victory salute, knowing that I would probably get fined. I didn't think I was going to get disqualified, but that's okay. They disqualified me because they knew that I, I should know better. So, and they're awesome. I love them down. I love those guys down at CCC, Carnegie Caulfield. Great club. They run great racing. So. Good humans, they're good humans. So that was it. So I'm going to, I've just had a litre of water. I'm just going to have some rice and some carbs so I can do Crowey's thing tomorrow night. But that is the end of the vlog. I'm sorry I'm rambling. I will catch you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. As always, see you tomorrow.